information, so um, bear with me. But um, God has done incredible things with me over the last three years. And um, for starters, um, I grew up in church. Can you hear me? I grew up in church um, and always knew who God was, but never who I was in God. I um, did the, the tree of weights growing up. I accepted Christ when I was in seventh grade. Um, and for whatever reason, um, around that same time, I began to drink and to smoke. And um, by the age of 15, I had started having sex and um, doing drugs. Um, so as you can imagine, one bad decision led to another. Um, and it was never, um, I, I shouldn't say that. I made bad decisions, but most of the time it was positions that I allowed myself to be in um, that were really the, the hurting moments in my life. Um, when I was in college, I started dating a guy um, who was verbally and physically abusive. Um, and I got pregnant and decided to have an abortion. Um, and I always kind of went back to, well, I don't want to always be attached to this person for the rest of my life. Um, and from that moment, um, after I had the first abortion, um, I can remember I had a 30 minute commute to school, to college. And I can remember um, driving to school and just thinking, well, what if I just ran off the road? Never, um, I never want to, you know, had suicidal thoughts, but I always thought about, you know, what would life be like without me here. Um, just from that time, I just knew that something wasn't right and I had made a bad decision. Um, when I was a, once I got out of that relationship, I um, met my husband and he, um, I was a junior in college at the time. We dated, um, unfortunately, still drinking, smoking, doing drugs, um, not really focusing on, you know, the Christian life that we should have been. Um, I moved in with Justin whenever I was still in school. Yeah, I was still um, finishing up college and decided to uh, move to Greenville where Justin was living and we moved in. Um, in hindsight, obviously, that opened up doors for Christian to continue on in. And um, we got married, engaged, and <coughs> our first year of marriage, um, we got pregnant. And we always just, we, well, we just said, well, we want to travel, we want to do this, we want to um, we want to work harder, we want to make more money. Um, when really it just boiled down to that we were just extremely selfish. Um, we decided to have an abortion. Um, so I had two abortions. And from that moment, it, Justin and I's marriage just kind of halted. Um, and walls were built up. Extreme hurt um, on both ends. Um, we never talked about it again. He, um, just kind of went into work mode and focused on that. I um, I decided to turn off from the world. Um, I wore a mask in front of everybody. Um, Justin did too. And our home life was just, we, we hardly ever talked. <clears throat> never really, um, we never talked about it again. So, <clears throat> We, um, <clears throat> two years had gone by, and <laughs> one thing led to another. Um, I decided to start hanging out with some people that I work with, and I ended up having an affair, and Justin kind of retreated to work. Um, I decided to move out. Um, so at this point in my life, I had, you know, murdered two babies and I have had an affair. Um, I hated myself and I had gotten to a point where I couldn't even look at myself in a mirror. Um, and in journaling, in hindsight now, um, and I, 
God gave me these words to say um, a few months back, but I was questioning God's existence, um, yet suffocating in my own existence. Um, I, I can't tell you the hatred that I had for myself. Um, once I had moved out um, through many prayers and family and people who um, loved us greatly, um, encouraged Justin and I to, to fight for, for what we had. Um, and in reading David and Goliath um, a few weeks ago, I told Justin this, that he, um, he was facing the impossible. Um, I wanted nothing to do with our marriage. I no longer wanted to be hurt anymore. So I built up this you know, huge wall. Um, Justin was facing Goliath. He, he wanted to make this work for us. Um, and what was different about David is that he knew that God was with him. Um, and that was, that was what was different between David and the other Israelites, that he knew that God was for him and with him. Um, and so I commend Justin for, for that. Um, but even still, it wasn't an easy journey. So three, three and a half years have gone by, um, and we're here now. But in those three and a half years, it was a really cool experience to, um, God has sewed us and continues to sew us back together. We were able to, uh, I was able to go through an abortion recovery class, it was a Bible study, um, where it was a 12-week study, and it was really cool because in those 12 weeks, I was able to just really learn how stupid I was um, and ignorant I was about um, the human body and about God's love for who I was in him. <laughs> he, um, God was fighting for me, and I didn't even know it. Um, that being, that stood out to me the most. Um, through this class, and I was able to, like, we were able to pray and talk with one another, and we were able to memorialize our babies, um, give names to our children, um, and kind of move forward and, and grieve the loss of, loss of them. So, um, God changed me completely then, but just this past March, um, I was able, I was asked to facilitate the same Bible study that I went through. Um, and it was really cool to see um, how God continues to change me um, and to change my perspective of things. That being said, um, there were four women in the Bible study that I helped facilitate, and there were 11 babies that had been aborted. <laughs> These women were 40 to 65 years old. They carried um, 20 to 45 years of pain and grief and, you know, and shame. And having to drive back and forth, I had a, an hour and a half commute from Wilmington to Myrtle Beach. And God revealed to me that he had set me free early for a reason. Um, I am now 29 and at the time I was 28 and for me for me to have this fire this desire to go out and talk to young girls about um, loving themselves and accepting themselves for who God says that they are um, is really my passion and what my heart is about um, it's been a long journey as you could imagine but it's super cool um, because I'm in the process of working with my school to do a, um, an after-school Bible study with the girls to mentor them. Um, I obviously have the ab abortion recovery um, piece that, that goes along with it. Um, and being a school teacher, I am able to have such an influence on middle school and high school girls. Um, and while I was going through the Bible study, at the high school that I taught at last year. Um, for whatever reason, I'll say that, but God told me to share my testimony 
with one of my girls. And I did, I was very apprehensive, and I didn't want to do it, didn't want to do it. And I finally did. Um, that day, it was the, the, the screaming and the noise got extremely loud in my head to the point where I was just like, here, let me talk to you. Um, I had no idea what her situation was as far as her sexuality, obviously, because we don't talk about that at school. But um, I shared my testimony with her, and she was like, Ms. Williams, it's really great. I appreciate you sharing that with me. Um, and then she wasn't at school for about a week, and so when she came back, I asked her, I'm like, where have you been? You know, Ms. Williams, she's like, well, my mom made me have an abortion. And I was devastated. Um, I was crushed that I, um, I was like, I, you know, I shared my story. What, what did I do wrong? What, what did I do wrong? Um, but then God again changed my perspective. Um, I gave this girl hope and that it was going to be a new, um, a new step in her life that she was going to have to um, accept forgiveness. Um, but it was devastating to me, but then at the same time, uh, I knew that I had given her hope. Um, a lot of people ask me, why do you feel the need to share your testimony? Um, what makes you want to do it? Or you're crazy, I would never do that. And just in, um, in reading Revelation 12, 11, it states that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And I believe in it, and I believe that with every single one of us, we have a testimony um, to tell and to share whether it be to give hope to someone or to prevent um, heartache from happening. Um, um, one of the, I wanted to read this to you guys. And my sister and brother-in-law are going to remember it. Um, while I, while Justin and I were separated, um, even through, I didn't really know him at the time, but even through those four months of, of agony where mm -hmm. I didn't know where, what I was, what I wanted out of life, who I was in life, um, God still gave me comfort. Um, and hindsight is 2020. So in the midst of being, living with my sister and brother-in-law um, during that time, one night I was sitting outside, they have a beautiful tulip tree, and I was sitting outside and by myself, it was late at night, and I wrote this on my phone. As I watched the blossoms of the beautiful tulip tree, late March 2011, pretty pink tulips lasted two weeks, and slowly the petals began to fall to the ground. The green leaves slowly began to take over the limbs, pretty but not as beautiful as the tulips. This fall, I'm sure as any other, tr other tree, the tulip tree will lose its leaves and become bare for the winter. Being stripped to the core of everything it has and left naked for everyone to see the foundation and what's underneath all of its beauty. People in life are the same way. As the tree will continue to grow and slowly gain back its outward appearance, next spring I will too. Um, that was my hope. And I didn't know it at the time, but that was, that was God telling me that I was going to be okay. And accepting that. Now I know three years later, um, but the signs were there to begin with, and just trusting and knowing that God, um, when he starts in you, he's going to finish it. Thank y'all.